Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fruit bearing part five, last one. I believe we are called to bear fruit for the Lord as we studied uh, John 15. Uh, again, if you want to uh, listen through as we talk through James chapter 2, uh, Last, last Sunday, working through the epistle of James, I believe he's called us to good works. Uh, many people, I believe, are, are confused by the epistle of James because they believe it teaches that works are required for salvation. But James never mentions the cross of Christ one time. It's zero times mentioned. The blood of Christ is mentioned zero times. So our, our works, it is very clear. We can look in Romans 4, 5, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. That faith in what Christ did on the cross is what it takes to be saved. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, not, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is a gift of God that we're, we're saved by grace through trusting what Christ did on the cross. But we are called to fruit bearing. We're, we're to do things for him. Not everyone wants to pay that cost. John 15, verse 1, to restate this, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, every branch in me that beareth not fruit. Now, this is a branch in Christ. So this is a saved person. It says, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. He removes people from fruit bearing. They're cast in the fire of eventually the judgment seat of Christ, but that's the same verb used in 1 Corinthians as we study uh, on being built on the uh, rock, which is Christ. Wood, hay, and stubble burns up, and any man's reward remains. Uh, he, ha he has a reward. Any man's work that remains, he has a reward. But if it's burned up, he himself is saved. Okay, and, and that's that's wonderful because it is salvation is a gift. It's not something earned. So John 15 is not talking about us doing something and abiding faithful. Otherwise, you can't be sure you're saved. You can be sure you're saved if you've trusted Christ. Verse three, now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. As we jump to verse 18, this is one of the reasons I believe that it's hard. It says, if the world, world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. A lot of people don't want to live for Christ and they count that cost and they don't, in that sense, take up their cross daily. Because we're called to do that as part of discipleship, not as part of salvation. Okay, salvation does not cost you something. It is a free gift. Okay, it's not a cost. It is a cost of discipleship, and many will bear that cost, and some will. It says, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. There will be those that when the sunlight of persecution comes, the stony ground here, they fall away for the word's sake. They don't hold true, but that they're losing reward. They're not losing salvation because it says they received the seed in the parable of the sower. Verse 21, but all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I have not come and spoken unto them, they had not had not sinned, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. See, Jesus came and he fulfilled all, all scripture when he preached uh, to the Jewish people that rejected him. They rejected him as the king. They rejected him as God. He's presented as God in the gospel of John. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Then ye shall also bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. You know, a lot of people, again, they don't want to uh, bear the burden 
of the things of Christ. You know, he says uh, that there is reward for following him, but there is loss of reward for not following him. Let me encourage you today. Uh, I know that many of those things are, are hard, but salvation is trusting what Christ did and trusting that alone. Read John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is present tense. And you can't lose that. And there's not an amount of abiding or the perseverance of the saints that gets taught you know, in the Calvinist doctrine that would say that this passage is referring to salvation. It's not talking about salvation. It is talking about fruit bearing. And there's not a sin you can commit if you fall into the Arminian camp that could lose your salvation. Both of those, the perseverance of the saints, the idea that you could lose your salvation. If you go to James 2.10, for whosoever uh, shall uh, keep the whole law yet offend in one point is guilty of all. That should be one of the most famous verses in the Bible that should make it clear that uh, if you had to be saved by keeping the law or had to stay saved by persevering or by not sinning, one sin would mess it all up and you would have lost your salvation or proved that you're not persevering to the end as, as the doctrine of tulip in uh, Calvinism would say. That, that's, not, that's not scriptural. And I don't mean any offense to people here. I, I'm not meaning offense. You know, uh, again, I know I talk about Catholicism. And if you're somebody who's Catholic, just look what the scripture says. Look at John 3, 16. Look at Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, no works, none whatsoever, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You want to be righteous in the, in the, uh, on the day you meet God and if you are righteous now, he calls us in James to good works, not to keep, not to stay saved, not to prove we're saved, but because we're saved and we want to show our love and we want to show it to others. We want to show others that, hey, we have a faith that means something so that they say, hey, I, I want that faith. I, we want to demonstrate it before mankind because we love the Lord and we want to keep his commandments for that reason. And let me encourage you to be in the word and ask the Lord to strengthen you so that if that day comes where you're facing some heat, some persecution, that you'll stand strong through that. It doesn't mean it won't be difficult, but if you have Christian brothers and sisters around you, they'll help bear that burden with you. I hope you've gotten something out of this this week. I hope if you haven't trusted Christ, that you will trust him as your savior today because it's simply trusting what he did on the cross for salvation. And now let's learn to take the next step. And let's trust that he has a plan in our life and that we can move forward with that plan and do good works for him. May the Lord bless you this week.